We're now going to build the aggregate demand curve graphically in this intermediate macro class by putting together the IS curve and the MP curve. What you're going to see is up here on the left is going to be our MP curve, which is R as a function of inflation. In the top right, we're going to see our IS curve, which is Y as a function of the real interest rate. When we put those two things together, we're going to get Y as a function of the inflation rate, which will be our aggregate demand curve down here in the bottom right. Let's begin. We start with our upward sloping MP curve. Remember that the MP curve is showing what central banks should target for the real interest rate, given that there's a level of inflation. We have the IS curve on the top right, which was downward sloping. The IS curve represented every point along Y what the real interest rate is that'll put the goods market in equilibrium. So now, how do we create the aggregate demand curve? Well, let's say we have a single point right here, which is this is the level of inflation. Let's call this inflation point A, and let's just say that that's also the inflation point A here, whatever that number is. Well, if we know inflation A in the MP curve is going to lead to the central bank putting this real interest rate A, which means that this real interest rate A is going to put the goods market in equilibrium at this output level A, we now have a combination of output and the inflation rate. So we have a single point A here. Now the way we're going to design this is we're going to show what would happen if we had, uh, I don't know, a lower level of inflation. Let's call this inflation B. Well, lower level of inflation would be here. And we see this lower level of inflation would have the central banks targeting a lower level of real interest. So this lower level of real interest will then move along the IS curve, creating a higher level of output. So again, we have a higher level of output associated with this lower level of inflation. So we get point B. Now we can do one more point. Let's say we had a higher level of inflation. Well, this higher level of inflation looks over here on the MP curve, which that higher level of inflation would lead to a higher level of the real interest rate targeted by the central bank. This higher level of the real interest rate would then move up and to the left on my IS curve. So we now have a higher level of inflation associated with this lower level of output. We go ahead and we connect these together. And what do we see? We have our downward sloping aggregate demand curve. Now a question of course would be what, how would we see this aggregate demand curve shift? Well, anytime the MP curve or the IS curve shifts, it's going to change these three points. And so as we work through this lesson, we're going to do a lot of stuff with shifting, and we'll have some examples later on.